Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So I know a lot of other people have made videos on this topic of LLM and R, um, but I still see that it's it's super prevalent in the world of pen testing and internal network assessments, um, which means it's something that hackers are still doing. So I wanted to share some of my knowledge around it and a really, really awesome tool called Responder uh, that you can use to go ahead and capture these net NTL mv 2 hashes in an environment. So we're going to talk about that one today, and if you are new to this topic, that's awesome. Um, and if this is something that you've seen before, feel free to click off or, uh, I mean, I guess let me know what type of content you would like to see if this is, you know, kind of like an overdone topic for you. Um, but regardless, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you're new here, because I make all kinds of cool ethical hacking content like this. All right, that's enough of that. Let's just dive right in. So one of the reasons I want to actually make this video is because I had a blog post on this thing, um, but it doesn't have a video to go with it. So I wanted to go ahead and make one so I could pin it to the top of my post. Um, but if you've never heard of LLM and R, I'll link this down in the description. Uh, really probably even a better page to go to is this one. Um, and you can get a link to this one from my post. I've got that mentioned, I think, right here. Um, but this one just kind of goes into more detail about what is NetBIOS, what is LLM and R, and kind of understanding how it works. But I'll give you a quick overview so that way you kind of have a, a basic understanding. Um, LLM and R is a lot like a, a legacy version of DNS. So if you're familiar with DNS, when you try to browse to a host, right, you try to go out to any sort of host name, um, the computer needs to be able to resolve that host name and turn it into an IP address. So that's kind of where LLM and R steps in, is if there's no DNS entry or there's no DNS server available that knows what that host name is, LLM and R steps in and it's like, okay, well, let's just ask everybody on the network. Let's send a broadcast out and say, hey, I'm trying to access this computer. Who Does anyone know who this is? Where is this computer? Who is this computer? And if an attacker is listening on the network for those type of broadcast requests, then they're able to actually respond to them. And they're able to say something like, hey, yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm exactly who you're looking for, but I need to make sure you have permission to view what I have for you. So go ahead and send me over your password, and I'll see if I have permission, or I'll see if you have permission to access me. And, you know, the computer that's looking for that computer is going to be like, yeah, let's, uh, here, here's my hash. So to kind of make a little bit more sense here, imagine this is like a Windows 10 computer, and imagine in a normal environment you actually have like a real server called server, right? And maybe on that server there's some folder that's being shared out, and it's called share. Um, so in this case, like, this isn't a real configuration that I have, but let's pretend that it is, right? So if you try to go out to this server share, normally it would work. But what if the user maybe mistyped server? Like, what if they just did serve and they forgot the R? As soon as they hit enter here, um, the computer is going to try to resolve this host name for its serve, and it's not going to be able to. And then LLM and R will step in, and it's going to ask everybody, hey, I'm looking for serve. Is that you? And if we're an attacker and if we're running a tool called Responder, we can actually look for those requests, respond to it, and capture the, the NTL MV2 password hash for this user. And this is one way to force that to happen. If you have LLM and R uh, present in your network, you don't even really need to do anything. You just need to set up, as a bad guy, you just need to set up your tool to listen, and then you just need to wait. Because throughout the day, a user's normal behavior, sometimes just signing into a computer and signing out, those type of things will just trigger LLM, LLM and R broadcasts uh, without anybody actually having to like make a typo or whatever. So it's a really, really common, really, really easy to exploit attack vector. So to do this, you're going to want to go out to GitHub and download this tool. And I've got a link to it right here. And feel free to just, you know, Google search a quick GitHub for Responder. If you don't want to click links, I totally get that. Um, but come out here, grab this guy. You can come in, you can grab that URL, and then you can just go into, like, your op directory and do, like, a sudo git clone, paste that, that URL in. And that should download uh, Responder for you. I've already got it here, so I'm just going to hop into it. And then one thing I want to show you is let's just edit this responder.conf file real quick. 
So this is like the configuration file for Responder. Um, and we're not actually gonna make any modifications in it today, uh, but this is just the first video that I'm gonna make on kind of like a little mini series of videos around this topic. Um, and in a future video, I'm gonna show you how not only can you capture a net NTLM v2 hash, but you can actually relay that hash without needing to crack it. You can just relay it and see if you can authenticate to another machine on the network uh, without ever cracking the password. But in order to do that, you will have to make a, a change here on what servers are listening. But for now, we can just have all of these turned on because we want to listen for all of these different servers. And if there's anybody who's trying to use LLMNR in any of these protocols, we want to respond to it. Another reason I wanted to show you this is because it has some information here about like limiting scope. Like you can come in and you can say, okay, well, we only wanted to respond to these specific IP addresses, or we only want to respond to these specific NetBIOS names, right? And so this is really, really helpful, this whole section, because if you're on a real engagement, you want to make sure that you're not overextending your scope, right? Like if you don't have permission to attack everything, but you can attack, you know, maybe like a, a 10 IP range or 10 host IP range on a network, this is where you can kind of limit that scope down and, and still make sure that, that you're able to, to perform these tests. So we'll go ahead and just exit out of here. If there's no changes we need to make, just quit out without saving. Okay, so we already looked at that. At this point, I think we're ready to just kind of perform a quick proof of concept of the attack. So I'm gonna spin up the responder.py script and we need to give it an interface to listen on. I believe ETH0 is gonna work just fine for me. And I'm even gonna go ahead and add a dash B so that way it's extra verbose. Uh, you may not need this, but it's uh, I'm just gonna add it for, for my case. So we'll run this out. And now we can see we've got all these different, and I'll scroll down a bit, sorry. Um, so we can see that we've got responder listening here. And then these are the different poisoners that are turned on. And these are all the servers that we're listening on here. So now we're just simply waiting for an event to occur. And we can wait this out, right? Like we can wait for just a, a, something to happen in the network that triggers the event on its own. And usually you don't have to wait very long. Sometimes a user just signing in or signing out or browsing a web page or trying to access a file share. Sometimes that'll just trigger one of these events. Um, but we can force a, an event to happen here. So I will move this victim up a bit. And let's just try to go out to, I guess that example that I mentioned earlier, we'll go to serve slash share. And look, I didn't even hit enter yet, but LLMNR already kicked in. Look at this, we've got all kinds of stuff popping up over here. So let's go check this out. So we see we've got a username that we captured for this K Bryant user, a part of the NDA domain. And then we have this NTLMV2 hash for them. And then there's a couple extra occurrences for it because it looks like there are multiple broadcasts and multiple um, I guess responses that were sent out, but they're all the same hash, right? And so we've actually got now the password hash for this K Bryant user. That's fantastic. So we've got all kinds of stuff that we're able to do with this now. We could take this offline, we could try to crack it, we can maybe relay it to another machine without trying to crack it. Um, there's, there's all kinds of things that we could do, um, but that's kind of outside the scope of this just general basic overview video. So I'm going to call it quits here, but if you like this type of content, uh, let me know and stay tuned for the next video where it's going to kind of expand on this topic of LLMNR. And yeah, hopefully you found some value and I'll see you guys next time.